France is in a very different situation than the Holy Roman Empire. It is, after all, a unified country at this point, and France is fighting for recognition as a political and cultural force. So let's look at Francis I. Now he gave the French a foothold in Milan and brought France to predominance in Europe. He was also very adverse to the new Protestants and persecuted them regularly through expulsion as well as death. Finally, he also attempted to elevate the culture of France, inviting Leonardo, amongst others, to his court. So he's persecuting peoples, he's coming out as a defender of the church, and this is not purely based on his beliefs, but rather a political move to align themselves with the church. The church, of course, being particularly powerful in Europe at the time. Ironically, the Holy Roman Empire will turn the other way and head Protestant. So when we see Leonardo da Vinci coming to court, this is an attempt by Francis I to make Paris, make France a cultural center of Europe, which arguably he does, although it's not entirely through the intervention of Leonardo as much as we'd like it to be. Now, he has a court artist by the name of Jean Clouet, who will create a portrait of Francis I that we're going to look at here. And what we're seeing is a portrait of a worldly ruler bedecked in his finery. This is really common for a Northern European portrait. They haven't simplified it. He's depicted Francis I in realistic fashion, but he's taken to the finery, something that we don't tend to see a lot of in Italy. He's focusing on the texture of the fabrics. He's letting us know what he's wearing, that he's wearing silks and satins with gold embroidery. We get that sense just through the painting. He doesn't have to give us any other symbolism. But he does give us a couple of other things. The medallion that Francis is wearing is the Order of St. Michael, which means he's a defender of Catholicism at this point. Now, some would argue at this point it might be defender of Christianity. We're still, the Reformation is fresh and ongoing, but it's basically that he's defending Catholicism. He has chosen that side in the fight. The flattened features lend an elegant, formalizing quality to the work while allowing for greater detail. So he's taken the face and simplified it to some degree. We've also seen the background is flattened. There's nothing behind him except what appears to be some kind of curtain or tapestry. And that's important because he wants to focus on his worldly power and his role as King of France. So that's why we're focusing on that finery. Finally, I want to look at and compare this with an image by Hans Holbein the Younger of Henry VIII. Of course, we're looking at rulers in roughly the same time period. And Henry VIII, again, is bedecked with all of his finery, giving us this sense of regalness through material goods, basically. The background is, again, flat, just like we see with Francis I. The difference is Leonardo has gotten involved a little bit in terms of, well, inspiration. Jean Clouet has taken the face and turned it three quarters, whereas Hans Holbein has Henry VIII looking straight at us. And the reason for doing that is it makes it more interesting. As we turn the face a little bit, we see an asymmetrical form. We can see the symmetry, we can see his eyes are at the same level and all of that, but it makes for a more interesting image rather than this with someone looking straight at us. Both of these, being Northern European, tell us that this is probably exactly how Francis I and Henry VIII actually looked at the time that they were painted. They're being very realistic. 